central banks. A central bank is the government controlled, owned, operated bank in a country. It's the bank that's somehow tied to the government of that country. In the United States of America, we have the Federal Reserve System. Many years ago, we had something called Bank of the United States, but that was killed. And for a long time, we didn't have a central bank, and now we have the Federal Reserve. What do central banks do? Well, there's five basic functions. The first is that the central banks clear checks and electronic payments. The Federal Reserve clears more checks and electronic payments than any other entity in the country. If you use your debit card and the company that you used it at, you, you, know, you swiped your debit card at Chipotle and they use one bank and you use a different bank, how does that money get between banks? The Federal Reserve moves it and charges people for moving it like a business. Number two, anything you do at your bank, your bank can do at the Fed. So the Fed makes loans to banks. The Fed has deposits of banks, does banking stuff. Uh, three, the rules and regulations like the 12% rule we talked about, the reserve requirement, uh, non-discrimination in lending rules, how much the bank can lend out to the stock market, various things like that. Rules and regulations for banks are set by the central bank. Number four, the central bank controls the money supply and interest rates. And number five, the central bank is the lender of last resort. That means that when the economy goes bad, it's up to the central bank to make sure that money's in the system so people can make transactions and that people who qualify for loans can find someone to loan to them. Okay. Beyond that, the Fed may help other agencies and central banks do their jobs, so they would tell you that they have a much more complex uh, work environment. Uh, the idea of independence is very important. Most economists think that central banks need to operate independently from politics. The reason is that governments, and we've talked about this before, governments don't mind inflation, they hate unemployment. Economists don't mind unemployment unless it's on themselves and they hate inflation. So if you want a central bank to worry about inflation, they have to be independent of politics. Countries with independent central banks have lower inflation rates than countries that don't. So the Federal Reserve was founded in 1913 after a big financial panic in 1907 that essentially J.P. Morgan saved the country, and people didn't think that was necessarily a great idea that some private citizen saved America. But because Andrew Jackson did not like central banks, the Federal Reserve was actually sold to the American public as a system to manage reserves. That's why it's called the Federal Reserve System. It's a way to manage reserves across the United States. So banks that have too much reserves or don't have enough can move their reserves around. There's a lot of other central banks in the world, and I gave you just a few names here so you understand that when you talk about some of these banks, they're central banks, Bank of England, Bank of Japan, Bank of Korea, People's Bank of China, Reserve Bank of Australia. The European Central Bank and the Central Bank of West African States are interesting because those are where countries share currency. So the euro is used all across Europe, and the African franc is used all across West Africa. They have one central bank that spans a number of countries, but then some of those countries still have their own central bank. So Germany has the Bundesbank. Sweden has the Sveriges There's these central banks that are still operating in Europe, even though they have a central bank, which is for all of Europe. Federal Reserve is run by a board of governors in Washington, D.C. There are supposed to be seven people on the Board of Governors, but we'll see. 14-year terms, that's how they're independent. 14 years prior to my writing this, speaking this, uh, George W. Bush was president. So there should technically right now be George W. Bush people, Obama people, and uh, Trump people on the Federal Reserve. That's not usually the way it happens. They don't usually stay their whole 14 years, which is a, a, not a good thing. 
They're appointed by the president, confirmed by Congress, but because they serve these 14-year terms, uh, they're very independent or can be. Uh, the Republicans, two years before the end of Obama's second term, stopped appointing people to the Federal Reserve. And in 2018, we actually got down to the point there were only two people on the Federal Reserve Board of Governors where they're supposed to be seven, and they were both Obama appointees. Uh, one of those people is this man, Jerome Powell. He is the chair. Chair served for four years. He's been the chair since uh, January 2018. When uh, President Trump took office, Janet Yellen was the chair. Normally, chairs are reappointed. So you look at when Obama took over, he kept Bush's chair. When uh, Bush kept, came into office, he kept uh, Clinton's chair. It's highly unusual. This is only the second time since World War II that a chair has not been reappointed. They retire when they get old, but they don't normally get not reappointed. Uh, Jerome Powell was an Obama appointee who uh, Trump took and made the new chair starting in January 18. He'll be the chair through 2022. So if a different person is elected president in 2020, that person will spend two years with at least two years, with Jerome Powell as their chair, and you would expect them to reappoint him. Federal Reserve system is an actual system. There are 12 banks, plus branches actually, so there are way more than 12 banks, spread across the entire United States. And in this picture, you can see how the country is split up. Each district is supposed to be a unique economy. So, for example, um, all of the steel mills in the United States basically were in four when four was founded. All the automobile production was in seven. You look at ten and it's farmers and ranchers, some mining. The only district that doesn't make sense is 12. 12 has, you know, Nevada and California and Idaho and Alaska and Hawaii and Samoa and... 12 has a little bit of everything. It's a fun district. We live out here in 12. It's, it's the fun district. But you can see the country divided up into these 12 districts. And no District 13. No Katniss Everdeen. So each district has a president. And it has a nine-person board of directors. So you've got these seven people in Washington. And then you have essentially 10 people per district district that run kind of run that district and there's 12 districts that's 127 people right there there's lots and lots of people involved in this the board of directors of a district includes three bankers who are elected by the bankers in their district three business people and three members of the non-banking public and the chair of that board has to be one of the non-banking public people within the federal reserve by law there is also something called the federal open market committee uh, when the Fed was first set up, it really wasn't independent. The Secretary of the Treasury ran it. There was other stuff. And so Congress figured out that wasn't a good idea, split everything off, and put onto it within the Fed structure this Federal Open Market Committee. The Federal Open Market Committee is the entity in the Fed responsible for controlling the money supply and interest rates. It is the seven members of the Board of Governors, plus, on a rotating basis, five of the bank presidents. New York always serves because New York is, you know, where bonds are. But the other 11 districts besides New York, they rotate on and off four at a time onto this Federal Open Market Committee. So there's a diversity of opinion. The whole country gets represented. Um, it's democracy. How does the Open Market Committee do its job? Well, that phrase, Open Market Committee, should tell you something. The Federal Open Market Committee does its job by buying and selling bonds. Let's think for a second. You have a bond that you bought from the government. I, the Federal Reserve, want to increase the money supply. I go in the back room, I print up some brand new money that's never been used, I go to you, and I get you to give me your bond. I buy the bond from you. The Federal Reserve buys your bond. When it does that, it gives you this fresh money, and now we've increased the money supply. If instead, you're sitting home with a bunch of money, and I want to lower the money supply, the Federal Reserve comes to me, says, hey, I got this bond. It's got a really nice interest rate. It's really cheap. I sell you this bond. I take your money away. I go shred it. 
and now I've lowered the money supply. So the Federal Reserve controls the money supply by buying and selling bonds, open market operations. Okay, so that's going to affect interest rates, right? Because the money supply moving up and down makes money more or less scarce. Interest rates are the price of money. They're going to make interest rates go up and down. So when I increase the money supply, what's called an easy money policy, I increase the money supply, interest rates will go down. If I decrease the money supply, interest rates will go up. The interest rates we're interested in, one is called the discount rate. The discount rate is the rate at which banks borrow from the Fed. It is always the lowest interest rate in the economy. Banks also can borrow from each other, and we'll talk about this um, in class. Banks can borrow back and forth between each other, and when they lend and borrow to each other, they pay something called the federal funds rate, and that's also under the jurisdiction of the Federal Reserve. So the Federal Reserve is looking at the money supply, looking at the discount rate, looking at the federal funds rate, and deciding what to do. As I'm speaking here, the Fed has been raising these two interest rates for the last uh, couple years, and President Trump is saying, no, 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 low, don't do it, but they're independent, and so they have to do what they think is right for the economy. Fed has other tools, it has other things it does, and there's a whole complex system of international stuff that goes on between central banks, and we will talk about that in class.